I don't know where I am now. I'm having trouble finding my way around. That's because you've gone just about as far as you can. Your body has already done a lot of changing, but that's only the beginning. The self-image, your key to living without limits. Nothing splendid has ever been achieved except by those who dared believe that something inside them was superior to circumstance. Understanding the psychology of the self can mean the difference between success and failure, love and hate, bitterness and happiness. Discovering your real self means the difference between freedom and the compulsions of conformity. By understanding your self-image and by learning to modify it and manage it to suit your purposes, you gain incredible confidence and power. Whether we realize it or not, each of us carries within us a mental blueprint or picture of ourselves. It may be vague and ill-defined, in fact it may not be consciously recognizable at all, but it is there, complete, down to the last detail. This self-image is our own conception of the sort of person I am. It has been built up from our own beliefs about ourselves. Most of these beliefs about ourselves have unconsciously been formed from our past experiences, our successes and failures, our humiliations, our triumphs, and the way other people have reacted to us, especially in early childhood. From all these, we mentally construct a self, or a picture of a self. All your actions, feelings, behavior, even your abilities, are always consistent with this self-image. Note the word always. You will act like the sort of person you conceive yourself to be. More important, you literally cannot act otherwise, in spite of all your conscious efforts or willpower. This is why trying to achieve something difficult with teeth gritted is a losing battle. Willpower is not the answer. Self-image management is. If you aren't achieving everything you want, it is probably because your goals are being ineffectively communicated to or rejected by your self-image. You cannot long outperform or escape your self-image. If you do escape briefly, you'll be snapped back. The person who conceives himself to be a victim of injustice, one who was meant to suffer, will invariably find circumstances to verify his opinions. The self-image is a premise a base or a foundation upon which your entire personality, your behavior, and even your circumstances are built. Our experiences seem to verify and thereby strengthen our self-images. Whatever is difficult for you, whatever frustrations you have in your life, they are likely proving and reinforcing something ingrained in your self-image like a groove in a record. It very seldom occurs to us that our trouble lies in our self-image or our own evaluation of ourselves. Based on certain ingrained, possibly hidden patterns of thought that, if altered, will free you to tap more of your potential and experience vastly different results. Success from the inside out, not the outside in. It is literally impossible to really think positively about a particular situation as long as you hold a negative concept of self. Once the concept of self is changed, other things consistent with the new concept of self are accomplished easily and without strain. 
you must find yourself acceptable to you. Your self-image must be a reasonable approximation of you, being neither more nor less than you are. It is a genetic imperative to explore the brain, because it's there. If you're carrying around in your head 100 billion mainframe computers, you just have to get in there and learn how to operate them. It is your personal imperative to invest the time, energy, and study needed to better understand and use your mind power. When your self-image is solid, you can go from one prospect to the next, regardless of the reception you get. Nobody on the face of this earth can make you feel inferior without your permission. Do not tolerate for a minute the idea that you are prohibited from any achievement by the absence of inborn talent or ability. This is a lie of the grandest order, an excuse of the saddest kind. The faculty of imagination is the great spring of human activity and the principal source of human improvement. The creative mechanism within you is impersonal. It will work automatically and impersonally to achieve goals of success and happiness or unhappiness and failure, depending upon the goals you set for it. Present it with success goals and it functions as a success mechanism. Present it with negative goals, and it operates just as impersonally and just as faithfully as a failure mechanism. Like any other servo mechanism, it must have a clear target, objective, or problem to work upon. You will actually program and reprogram or engineer the personality and the life experiences you desire. Humans of all creatures are more than creatures. They are also creators. With imagination, they can formulate a variety of goals. They alone can direct their success mechanism by the use of imagination or imaging ability. Many people waste much of their imagination power frittering it away on aimless daydreaming and fantasy with no real appreciation for what it might do if applied purposefully. The sun's light diffused is a gentle warmth directed through a magnifying glass in a certain way, it is incendiary. The imagination, aimless, may provide pleasant entertainment. Applied purposefully, it can effectively program your self-image and in turn your automatic success mechanism to realize whatever goals you choose. You are not a machine, not a computer, but in a very real sense, you have an awesomely powerful computer-like success machine at your disposal. Your physical brain and nervous system make up a servo mechanism that you use and that operates very much like a computer, a mechanical goal-seeking device. Your brain and nervous system constitute a goal-striving mechanism that operates automatically to achieve a certain goal, very much as a self-aiming torpedo or missile seeks out its target and steers its way to it. Your servo mechanism is capable of being an automatic success mechanism or an automatic failure mechanism. That depends on what marching orders or programming it gets through your self-image. Servo mechanisms are divided into two general types. One, where the target, goal, or answer is known and the objective is to reach it or accomplish it. Two, where the target or answer is not known and the objective is to discover or locate it. The human brain and nervous system operate in both ways. An example of the first type is the self-guided torpedo or the interceptor missile. The target or goal is known. The objective is to reach it. Such machines must know the target they are shooting for. They must have some sort of propulsion system that propels them forward in the general direction of the target. They must be equipped with sense organs, radar, sonar, etc., 
which bring information from the target. These sense organs keep the machine informed when it is on the correct course, positive feedback, and when it commits an error and gets off course, negative feedback. The machine does not react or respond to positive feedback. It is doing the correct thing already and just keeps on doing what it is doing. There must be a corrective device, however, that responds to negative feedback. The torpedo accomplishes its goal by going forward, making errors, and continually correcting them. By a series of zigzags, it literally gropes its way to the goal. Something very similar to the foregoing happens in the human nervous system whenever you perform any purposeful activity. You already own the process. Are you connected to an infinite storehouse of ideas, knowledge, and power? You begin with a goal in mind, an end to be achieved. Your self-image is important, so build a good one. You must have a self that you can trust and believe in.